Sam is 49, living in Benfleet. She is blind and had a double organ transplant five years ago. Life has been challenging for Sam since COVID-19 reached the UK. So in the middle of March, I received a text message saying that I could open the windows to my property, but I'm not allowed out until the middle of June. But by this point, Sam was already living in a hotel. We've had an insurance claim going on because I had a water leak three years ago. So my house isn't actually safe. And because of the virus, they can't now start. They haven't been able to start the work. We're just hoping it'll get done before Christmas so we won't have our third Christmas out of the house. We come back during the day so Winston can run in the garden, uh, my guide dog, so I can still look after him, keep him safe. Just before lockdown, Sam had a terrible accident. I spilled a kettle of boiling water over my legs. We ended up calling an ambulance. Of course, I went on my own. I was really, really impressed when I, I went to the Burns Unit at Broomfield Hospital um, because they were absolutely amazing. There was basically one person that came in the room each time and all of them said to me, don't worry, we're wearing a face mask. They didn't just... Um, assume I could see. So just at the time when everyone wants to be staying away, home, isolating, as I should have been, I've had to be going up and down to the hospital. On her return to the hotel, her husband Dave had become unwell. About half past six he said he had the temperature. By ten o'clock he said he was getting breathless and by about one o'clock he'd become quite weak. Dave had COVID-19. It sounds absolutely horrendous. And if I look back in hindsight, I would say he should have gone into hospital because he was really, really struggling. I would want, I almost want to phone him every hour because obviously you can't be in the same room as them and say, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you still alive? But you can't. Um, because he couldn't talk properly, he couldn't catch his breath. The hotel moved Dave into a separate room. Sam found the process of making herself safe distressing. You know you have to disinfect everywhere that they've been. But most people, when sadly someone is going to pass away, they keep their jumper, don't they, so they can have the smell, something close to them of theirs. And there I was wiping things down, anything that he had touched. And I felt awful. I found it really upsetting because I thought I'm wiping away my husband and I don't know if he's going to survive. Sam's husband is continuing his recovery. But the experience has been a tough one for Sam. You don't realise what you miss until you think about it. And I do miss my family immensely. I so want to hug my husband and say, I'm so proud to have you back. I'm so proud that it didn't get to you. I want to hug my son and say, do you know what, I love you. I want to stand there at the side of the, whatever it is, the barrier. As a proud mum, and I know I'm blind, but watch him having his passing out parade. And I want to hug my daughter and say, do you know what? No words can ever thank you for what you've done for me, how you've helped me at this difficult time. Sam feels she has had excellent support. But she wants to remind people of the unique challenges blind people face. The support that I've had has been amazing. And to be honest with you, for that, I can't thank people enough. But if I was to walk to the supermarket now, Winston, my guide dog, wouldn't recognise that there might be a queue of people outside. He would walk me straight to the door, as he's been taught to do. Being blind, I can't social distance as much as I might want to and try. My guide dog won't recognise social distancing. I'd be really pleased if I was walking on the street, when people saw me, they would cross over the road and walk on the opposite side, which in normal circumstances, if you could see, you'd think that would be a bit rude. But actually, you know what? Please do. (laughs) 